One account says this song was written in 10 minutes. The other says 20 minutes. Well, either or is certainly fast, but what a lot of people don't know is that only two verses were originally written, the first and the third as it ends up on the record. The middle verse was added a month later. Dylan wasn't all that keen on this added verse. He said, I try to write the song when it comes. I try to get it all. At first he put the verse at the end, then switched it to the middle. Shortly after the song got published, before it was recorded, a high school student found the sheet music and claimed it as his own. It took this kid 11 years to admit that he only did this to impress people. Dylan wasn't even the first one to perform his own song to a large crowd. That would be Gil Turner, who Dylan took it to. Turner played it, and the people were stunned, in a good way. They clapped and Dylan was just seen smiling and laughing. This song propelled Dylan into success. It's the first song on his sophomore breakout album and let him be the songwriter he set out to be, and not just another performer that he was seen as at the time. Peter, Paul, and Mary covered it to commercial success, netting Dylan over 40 grand in publishing rights. Some say the music is spiritual. Dylan was all over the place with this saying, I didn't really know if that song was good or bad, it just felt right. I needed to sing it in that language. And later saying, I've always seen it and heard it that way. It's just taken me, I just did it on my acoustical guitar when I recorded it. Which didn't really make it sound spiritual, but the feeling, the idea, was always, you know, that's where it was coming from. Written in the key of D, Dylan also plays the harmonica in D. The capo on the 7th fret creates a back and forth with C and G chords. His use of the upper register of the guitar, along with alternating the bass notes, makes his lone guitar sometimes sound like two. The simple strumming pattern makes the words easy to hear. His voice is raw and unneeded to be amazing with the expressions he's given off. Easy enough, the song was recorded in three takes, with the last take being used as the master. The lyrics are nothing but questions, and Dylan never lays down a real answer. They are filled with metaphors. I personally like verse 2 a lot. It's more concrete and topical to the situation outside the studio. How many years can some people exist before they're allowed to be free? An obvious nod to the civil rights movement. How many times can a man turn his head and pretend that he just doesn't see? Again, attacking leaders mostly who have gone to war for no good reasons, in Dylan's eyes, and who have let all these attacks on people happen and always pretend they just don't see it. The third verse goes back to these symbols talking about really seeing the sky and what it stands for with more questions at the end of the verse. How many ears must one man have before he can hear the people cry? How many deaths will it take till he knows that too many people have died? It seems like Dylan is shaming the government, asking, how dare they? Wondering if it's all a numbers game to them. Oh, one more death? Okay, pack it up. And it all comes back to the unresolved chorus. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. Dylan leaves us with this chorus, saying it's possible the answer is there. He goes on to say, There ain't much I can say about this song, except the answer is blown in the wind. It ain't no book or movie or TV show or discussion group, man. It's in the wind. I still say it's in the wind, and just like a restless piece of paper, it's got to come down some. But the only trouble is, is that no one picks up the answer when it comes down, so not too many people get to see it and know, and then it flies away. Easy enough, right? The people weren't satisfied. He had to preface this song before playing it with a dreadful-like speech during his early concert days, and then stopped playing it altogether for about eight years. The song was the catalyst that started the voice of the generation and prophet name-calling from the masses. Altogether, this song is somewhat shortened to the point. Right off the bat, it's just filled with questions upon questions, imagery is meant to imitate life, and the answer so close in front of you that you can't even get to it. Albeit given Dylan problems with the press as usual at first. And I believe this song gave him the confidence to break through and become the songwriter that he set out to be and eventually did become. Let's end it all with a quote from Dylan himself, summing up the whole thing. This here ain't a protest song or anything like that, because I don't write protest songs. I'm just writing it as something to be said, for somebody, by somebody. That about does it for this one. Hope you enjoyed the deep dive into this song and learned something. If you did like it, leave a like, obviously. Come on now. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider it, and leave a comment for the next song that we should do. Have a great day.